Well, it looks like the Fantastic Beasts films have officially been cancelled. The prequel to the Harry Potter books and films started off with great potential, but over time it became clear that the series was doomed. In this video, I'm going to explain why that is and why these films fizzled out. Hmm. I feel like something's missing. <gasps> this is it. Welcome to the new Movie Flame setup sponsored by these amazing posters from Displate. Displate is about collecting your passions and getting inspired. It's a one-of-a-kind metal poster, it's passion printed on metal. This allows it to be incredibly sturdy, eliminating the flimsiness of a paper poster, which can be so frustrating. It's also easy and safe to hang with its unique magnet mounting system, which also makes it stay up much better and eliminates any lines that might be on a normal poster. And one of the best things about it for me is that it doesn't reflect. Heavy lights that you can't really see right now but that are behind the camera don't affect how the poster looks. And for the average person, it allows your display to look amazing in any room no matter what the lighting setup is. Displate has so much to choose from, having too many fandoms to count. You can see of course they have the Harry Potter brand shop, and they also have the same for Marvel, DC, Avatar The Last Airbender, Star Wars, and so much more, all things that I cover on this channel. Displate works with 40,000 notable artists, they have 1.3 million designs available for you, and they deliver to 56 different countries. As I said, Displate is a good alternative to standard paper impressions or canvas printings, and it's even cheaper when you use my link. You can get 25% off if you buy 1 to 2 disc plates, and you get 35% off if you buy 3 or more disc plates. It's a great offer, so don't miss out. You'll get a great product, and buying it will help support the channel. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. The Fantastic Beast film started off with a bang in 2016. They brought the Wizarding World to America, we got to explore a character that we had heard briefly about in the original series, it introduced us to so many cool and amazing magical beasts that we had either seen a bit of or hadn't seen at all before, it had JK Rowling writing the script, had David Yates back to direct, and had pretty much the exact same team the original series had. When it was released, it did very well in the box office, actually beating out The Prisoner of Azkaban, which I actually talked about in a recent video I did, I'll link it below if you're interested so you can watch it after this one. Following the success of the first movie, Rowling revealed that there would be 5 movies in total for this series, meaning we still had 4 films to go. However, as the series went on, it got away from the things that made fans fall in love with the first movie. Fans complained that there were less magical beasts, which was literally in the title of the series. Because of this, many said it shouldn't be called Fantastic Beasts anymore, which I sort of agree with. I feel as though it should have just been The Crimes of Grindelwald or The Secrets of Dumbledore, dropping the Fantastic Beast part. Fans also disliked how the movies were shifting away from the lovable Newt and now focused more on Dumbledore and Grindelwald, which rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Personally for me, I like this change of pace because I actually really like Dumbledore and Grindelwald's relationship, but even though I liked it, others greatly disliked this relationship, especially when Rowling revealed that they were gay lovers. This fact alone made so many fans give up on the series. Personally, I think they've always been gay. It was heavily implied in The Deathly Hallows, and Rowling revealed this back in 2007 just a few weeks after the final book was released, meaning it was still fresh in her head. So I truly think that that was a genuine part of the story. However, let's rewind a bit. With all of this hate, it's hard to remember a time when fans were actually really excited for The Crimes of Grindelwald to come out. The Crimes of Grindelwald hype started to take off right when my YouTube channel got big, and I made a trailer breakdown for it, and pretty much every comment was talking about how this movie was going to be amazing. Everyone was eager to learn more about Grindelwald's past and his time as a tyrant because he was one of the most menacing villains the Wizarding World had ever seen. Everybody was also so excited to see a young Dumbledore, and I think the most excitement came from the fact that Nagini, Voldemort's snake, would be in this movie as a human. What a plot twist. Looking at all of this, leading up to the film, fans were pumped. But when the film debuted, it was the beginning of the end for the series. The great gift of your applause is not for me, no. Fans hated the crimes of Grindelwald, and I saw something really interesting happen. 
At the time, I was in the heart of the Harry Potter fandom with my channel. Fans from all over the world were putting their two cents in my comment section. And all of a sudden, people were saying that they not only hated the second film, but the first Fantastic Beast film as well. This threw me off because it was a complete change in what people had been saying in my comment section a few weeks earlier. Everyone was praising the hell out of the first movie and saying that the crimes of Grindelwald was going to be just as good. Confused, I went to look at Twitter, looked at notable articles online, and even went on Reddit forums, and it was the same as my comment section. Just a few weeks after The Crimes of Grindelwald was released, all this hate for the first movie was bubbling to the surface as well. This hatred of the series manifested online, and it was like poison for these prequel films. So much hate was being spread, and if I'm being perfectly honest, I fell into a rut and joined in on this hate too. I became brainwashed by the internet just like everybody else. But luckily, I snapped out of this when I decided to make video essays on each of the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beast films. And when I rewatched Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them and The Crimes of Grindelwald, I was like, these movies are actually not that bad. What was I thinking? In my video essays, I defended both films and even talked about the rut I fell in. I also talked about how a lot of the hate that these movies were getting was sort of unjustified. But in my video for The Crimes of Grindelwald, I also admitted that there were a lot of problems, specifically with the writing. And that brings me to my first big point in this video. One of the biggest downfalls of this series was how it was written. Rowling had a lot of help when writing the first movie screenplay, mostly from Steve Clovis, who had adapted 7 out of the 8 movies in the original series. However, Rowling felt as though she did not need help with the second film, so she did all the writing herself, and the result was not good. She wrote it more like a book, which translated very poorly to the big screen. She was used to just saying what happened like in a novel, but with a film, you have to show it, and that is not something that she excels at. I've talked about this before, but one of the main examples of this is the introduction of a character who was supposed to play a big role in the series after the second movie, Yulali Hicks, or Lally for short. In The Crimes of Grindelwald, we see Nicholas Flamel talk to her, but watching the movie, there's no way to know who she is. But if you read the screenplay, it says both her name and that she's a professor at Ilvermorny, the American Wizarding School. That would have been great to know while watching the film, but Rowling wrote this in a way that sort of screwed director David Yates over. She reverted to her novelist style of writing. Instead of putting this in the dialogue, she wrote it out in the actions and set up part of the script, something that is not meant to give information like the information Rowling is trying to give here. We see a similar instance where Rowling reverted to her novelist style of writing when we look at the flashbacks in this movie. We have Lita's time at Hogwarts and the confession of Lita and Kama at the end of the film. Rowling wrote these flashbacks the way you would in a book, almost like Hagrid's tale in the fifth novel or Aberforth's telling of a sibling story in the seventh novel. Looking at these in the books, they're both pretty long stories, but it works because being in a novel, it allows it to sort of take over the main story for a while. This, however, does not work for a movie because it's no longer seen as a story inside of a story, but rather as a brief flashback. That's why these multiple scene flashbacks feel sort of out of place, confusing, and very bulky. And there is a way to do this correctly in film. I just watched the film Living, which actually stars Bill Nye, who played Rufus Scrimger in The Deathly Hallows. Comparing the two movies, for Living, instead of having the flashbacks be multiple scenes in a row, they make them much more natural as they're spread out a great deal. And even more importantly, in Living, these flashbacks are a crucial part of the story and plot being told. Without them, the story wouldn't be complete. Meanwhile, in The Crimes of Grindelwald, their flashbacks sort of do the opposite, adding bulkiness that takes us away from the original story. It's clear that Rowling just doesn't have the experience to be able to do this well. And to be fair, this is only her second film. It makes sense that she doesn't have that skill. Because of this though, I also blame the studio and others working on the movie. It seems as though they just sort of bowed down to Rowling because she's JK Rowling. No one was brave enough to say, hey, you're not good enough to do this on your own. Let us help you. It took her writing this entire movie and also writing the screenplay for the third film until they finally got brave enough to say, hey, this script is not good, you need help. They ended up scrapping her original screenplay for the third film, brought Steve Clovis back, and they wrote a new screenplay which was based on the original one by Rowling. However, it seems as though Rowling still got her way in the writing process, because this movie gave us the most confusing scene in all three of the movies. The scene I'm referring to is the one where Dumbledore and Credence go into an alternate reality. It was not until months later when the screenplay was made public that we discovered they went to another dimension called the Mirror World, which was a place that was never named or even mentioned throughout the entire movie. It was only said in the screenplay. 
There was so much information written in the screenplay about how and why they got there, which never translated to the big screen because it was explained in the actions part of the screenplay, again like a novel, rather than in the dialogue where it should have been. Reading the secrets of Dumbledore's screenplay is what made me realize that the Fantastic Beasts films should not have been films first. They should have been novels written by Rowling that were then adapted to the big screen. I was able to make a 16 and a half minute video just talking about the secrets of Dumbledore on this topic, explaining why it would have worked so much better had Rowling just made it a book before adapting it. Sort of like how Suzanne Collins wrote the Hunger Games prequel as a book and then allowed the studio to make it into a movie after the fact. So to me, that is one of the biggest reasons why this series failed. Rowling had too much power during the writing process, which led to awkward storytelling, confusing concepts, and a lack of explanation, all of which I think turned fans off from these movies. Moving to my next point, I think another big reason why these movies failed is because of things that happened behind the scenes. JK Rowling went from one of the most beloved and admired people in the world to perhaps the most hated person on the planet for a while. She made controversial statements about trans people, which even made many of the Harry Potter cast who had been friends with her for over a decade call her out and say she was wrong. The original cast disagreeing with and turning their backs on JK pretty much led the way for a lot of Harry Potter fans to do the same. When Harry, Hermione, Draco, Ginny, and even Newt himself make a move like this, it's safe to say that many Harry Potter fans will follow. This of course led to people boycotting Harry Potter and anything to do with it, including the Fantastic Beast films. This had a big impact, because following this, the movies did not perform even close to as well as they had hoped, both in theaters and in streaming and DVD sales. Then, things got even worse with the whole Johnny Depp incident. Johnny Depp's ex-wife Amber Heard accused him of abuse, and Warner Brothers jumped the gun and fired him as Gellert Grindelwald, which for me was the best part about these movies, Johnny Depp playing the tyrant Gellert Grindelwald. I of course understood though, I was sure that Warner Brothers did their research and I was sure that they were right about the accusations. Months later however, Johnny took Amber to court, and it turned out it was actually the other way around. Johnny was the one being abused by Amber. He won the case by a landslide, won over pretty much the entire world after what he was put through by Warner Brothers and Amber Heard, and Warner Brothers was left looking extremely foolish. And Warner Brothers just made things even worse for themselves, as they kept the now guilty Amber Heard for Aquaman and other DC projects despite the fact that they fired an innocent Johnny Depp. Fans were now not only boycotting the films because of JK Rowling, but because of Warner Brothers as well. That is a massive blow to these prequel films that is very hard to recover from. And if two things causing fans to boycott these movies wasn't enough, right before the release of the film, Ezra Miller who played Credence got into a ton of outrageous legal trouble, which honestly wasn't really Warner Brothers fault. However, Warner Brothers showed where they stood with Ezra Miller when they kept him on as The Flash. They showed fans that they backed this crazy violent actor despite all of the things that he's done. This gave fans a third reason to boycott these movies. With all of that built up, it's pretty significant, and the numbers show this immensely. The Secrets of Dumbledore made $244 million less than The Crimes of Grindelwald, which had already underperformed on its own, and the third film in the franchise only made $404 million, and it took re-releasing it several times to even hit the $400 million mark. Considering that arguably Warner Brothers' biggest franchise made less than half of what they expected, even though they made a ton of money, it was viewed as a very big failure. Because of this, Warner Brothers has decided not to pursue the fourth or fifth film in the series. While this seems like the right move for the studio, it's definitely a bummer for a lot of fans, including myself. Even with its many flaws, I for one enjoyed this series. I thought it had a lot of fun easter eggs, I thought it added a lot of great lore to the Harry Potter universe, and I was eager to see some plot lines play out that we hadn't seen yet, like the promise Theseus made Dumbledore make about catching Grindelwald. Promise me, you'll find him and you'll stop him or seeing more of Newt and Tina's relationship grow after Tina had barely been in the third film, because we know from Harry Potter lore that was established in the early 2000s, they eventually end up together and get married. I'm also bummed we won't see how Nagini went from this kind human to the deadly snake she became in the original series. And most of all, I wanted to see the epic duel between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, the duel that was dubbed the most epic showdown in Wizarding World history. I'm still convinced that's where the series was headed, that epic duel in 1945, and I'm sad we won't get to see it. 
I was also excited to see more of the Wizarding World, because so far, we had seen America, France, and Bhutan. So the fourth and fifth films could have gone anywhere, maybe even showing us Ilvermorny, or the other Wizarding schools like Castella Bruxu, the Brazilian school, or Mohuto Kobro, the Japanese school. Even with all of these loose ends though, we did get a pretty good ending, as this film could be seen as the ending of the franchise. We left on a very happy note as Jacob and Queenie got married, we saw them finish this mission successfully. I'm sure there were many more missions to come, but it is fitting that they ended on one that was a successful mission. And we of course saw Albus Dumbledore all alone in the final shot, which foreshadows how he'll be alone for the rest of his life, never finding another lover besides Grindelwald. I've said this multiple times in the video, but I feel as though the hate these movies got was somewhat unjustified. They did have their problems, but what franchise doesn't? I think it's really unfortunate how the internet sort of soured the series for a lot of people who might have actually enjoyed it had they not been convinced on Twitter or YouTube that they didn't like it. And as I said earlier, I was victim to this as well. I was one of the people that fell into a rut and hated these movies because the internet told me that I hated them. I've seen this firsthand on my own channel. If I love something in Harry Potter, everybody else loves it. If I hate something in Harry Potter, everybody else hates it. There's a lot of power that us influencers hold, and it scares me at times. It scares me so much that I'm so careful not to abuse that power. That's just how it goes though, a lot of big YouTubers made videos about these films being bad, which might have swayed audiences. That being said, many of the YouTubers had some good points, like the whole McGonagall mess up. In canon, she wasn't supposed to be born until 1935, while the films take place in the 1920s, and she's there even earlier when we see Lita's flashbacks from the early 1900s. I've seen people say that Warner Brothers and JK Rowling deserve the failure of this franchise because of the things that they did and said, which is a pretty hateful view that I don't like to take, even if there is a bit of truth to it. You have to remember that there are so many other people involved in these movies that didn't do anything wrong. They just showed up to work and worked their asses off to give us the best movies they could make. And I'll leave you with this. I really enjoyed the movies that we did get in the series. There were a lot of great characters, relationships, magical beasts, hints to older wizarding families, and it fleshed out many story arcs that I really wanted to see, like how Ariana's death affected Dumbledore, or how the wizarding world looks outside of just London. These films brought me a lot of joy, and I'm sad to see them end. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.